most Indians have no clue about the greatness of their civilization, except a tiny minority, because the education that is imparted in India uh, to Indian kids, both in, you know, in the level of schools and universities, is Western education. I mean, the, when, when uh, the British left, the first prime minister of India, for good and bad reasons, just took over everything from the British, including the education system. So today, no doubt, you know, Indian students are brilliant, but they're just good for export because uh, they have not any Indianness in their in the education. I mean, if you take Kalidasa, for instance, one of the greatest poets ever in humanity, you know, that many Westerners are put on par with Homer, you know, or with uh, Shakespeare. He's not taught in school. Uh, even Kalidasa translated from the Sanskrit, his poetry and his prose is of such divine quality, but he's not taught in India. Take, you know, pranayama or meditation, which are now in the West, you know, you see that Hollywood stars practice yoga, hatha yoga fluently, but here in India it is not taught in school, and yet he would make children give them suppleness and Indianness. Take pranayama, for instance, which again is being accepted in the West. There are scientific studies that show that pranayama cools down the nervous system, makes it for a clear mind. You know? Not taught in India. Uh -uh. Sri Aurobindo, one of the greatest philosophers, contemporary philosophers, you know, his life divine, you know, his synthesis of yoga. I've been praised again by Westerners in my country, France. Sri Aurobindo has been praised by Andre Malraux or you know, so many others. But he's not taught in, uh, not even in philosophy curriculums.